All right, in this tutorial, we're going to take a look at how to hack the particle walker uh, into an interactive particle simulation. You can simply, um, yeah, drag your mouse around and create like this really nice swells here and stuff like this. And yeah, for this to work, you will need the particle walker component from the OLIP. You will find the link in the component. And um, that's basically all there is. Um, so I already have it here. So I'm gonna deactivate this one. And let's dive right in here. So um, short, what is the particle uh, walker doing anyway? Basically, it's uh, running a uh, simple particle simulation in 2D space and it walks over a so-called vector map. And what is a vector map? It basically describes at every position of the build a specific direction where we want to push our particle. And as we already can see here, we have uh, the noise driver input, which is just another name for the particle map. So um, how can we uh, do all of this? First, uh, we want to have something that is driving uh, everything. And then we're going to use um, the direction where we are moving something. But first, we need to set everything up so we can actually run it and interact with it. So because this particle walker here is a base component, we're going to go to change OP type and we're going to change it to a container component. So container panel. And uh, when we did this, it's going to be dark. Let's uh, change the resolution to something like 1280 by 720. And then we're going to adjust the background top here to be our output one. And right now you will see this super weird behavior. And this is because of a bug when I'm not understanding it myself correctly anyway, but uh, it is inside of the noise driver component. And normally we don't have to go inside for this, but in this case, we have to go to the plain UV and we have to change the pixel format around once and then we simply <clears throat> call the reset here okay so now let's uh, create our vector map and for this we are going to create a circle which is uh, going to look like this we are going to um, set it to the same resolution as our parent and we're simply going to reduce the size of the circle because it's going to be our finger to something smaller and more manageable. And we're going to increase the softness here so we don't have like super hard edges. The next step we're going to do is we are going to uh, put in uh, one expression and we are going to use the parent um, panel uh, UV coordinates. And so we're going to put in a parent panel and we're going to say uh, inside U. So that's the U coordinate on the X axis. And we're going to put in the same expression, but with the V uh, expression for the Y axis. And as you can see, <clears throat> um, it's set to zero, zero, which, ah, uh, sorry. Um, of course, this does not belong in the actual radius. So let's reset this on this situation. Of course, we want to set it uh, to be the center value. So we have to set center X uh, equals the parent panel inside U and the center Y is the same as a par parent panel inside V. So um, to test it out, we can right click on our particle renderer two name, and we're going to say view, make it a little bit smaller. <clears throat> and as you can see, uh, we move around our uh, mouse inside here and the value for the center changes. 
and as you can see it uh, um, has an offset and it has an offset between uh, of 0.5 on both axes because basically the uh, circle is going from the center and uh, on both axes and basically what we can do is we can change the justifying here for one we can say okay on the x-axis we want to justify it on the on the x-axis like this it's uh, close enough and the same for the justify vertical we set it to bottom so but uh, yeah we have it working like this so the next step what we want to do is we now want to get the actual uh, movement of our circle here and luckily there already is something in the palette and um, this is called the uh, optical flow component and we take a look we drop it here and we put it in and now if we take a look here if we move our component we now have this red and green values and this basically is a vector field and it's a very simple vector field and this vector field basically says okay we're pushing our circle in a certain direction and this translates um, to red for one direction and uh, red for the x-axis and green for the y-axis so we can now simply put the output of our optical flow into our noise driver here and as you can see something changed and already when we move our mouse here over the particles you see that they go haywire so maybe let's reset our driver here and let's try this again and right now you see that they go very very strong uh, in certain directions that's not exactly what we are after so uh, we can change this by adjusting the force of the optical flow and we have to set it to a negative value because right now they move in the opposite direction of our actual movement so uh, we have to set it to a lower value and we have to set it to a value that is a negative so something like 0.4 looks quite nice when we increase the size here you can see that it's now moving along quite nicely so we can reset the parameter here again of course and we have the very nice looking uh, interactive parameters another thing we can do is we can adjust the alpha and uh, so that we have to click that's also quite simple by parent dot panel dot select just going to show you the expression here so right now when we are inside you can see that we don't actually show the circle so we don't have anything related to the optical flow uh, but if we click the mouse then the button returns and it all uh, is movable so what we now also might want to do is uh, we want to reset our particles over time because right now they sit like super stiff and it starts to not look super nice so there is the possibility uh, if we take a look here in our noise driver um, we can hack it a little bit by simply taking a look here and what we have here is here we have our position and the position is what's going to be a uh, sent out to our particle instancer and it's also going to be used as a feedback to get our actual position on the vector field and return the acceleration from our vector map. So what we can do here is we can simply reset the uh, position value here. And we can do this by 
uh, using a select top here. Uh, we're going to grab the output of our plain UV component here. So let's grab this, let's select it. And the next thing is we are going to need a uh, so-called matte top. And I'm going to put this one in here. I'll put this one in here. Uh, with the matte top, we have to give it a, uh, a ramp channel. And with the ramp channel, we are going to allow the uh, first input on uh, white it should be and the second input on black or oh, we, we can mix between them but we don't want to mix them because this will result in some quite interesting uh, behavior we instead want to set it to step create a little point here and make like a super small super small stepping uh, stone here and we're going to create an LFO Set it to ramp, make it awfully slow. And now just drop it into the face here. And now when we set the matte channel, not to alpha, but instead to luminance, you can see that uh, we now instantly have reset the whole channel. And that's basically because we have to switch the inputs and now if we go back on the top level, we can bring in a little bit of chaos. As you can see, and already you can see here on now from left to right that uh, slowly all the particles get reset. And here you can still see like this super weird behavior where they are uh, like snapping back to their initial position um, and we can make use of this so uh, we're gonna leave it but I'm also gonna show you how to remove it um, but actually it kind of looks not too nice that it's going from left to right so instead what we can now do is we can feed our ramp here into a lookup chop and we can use a simple, super simple noise texture here. We actually, again, have to switch the uh, inputs. And we also set this one, the period to like a super high value. And now we have this like chock, 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 chock values. And because we don't want to have it like uh, creating this weird, snapping back from the actual position to where they belong to we simply disable on all of this the uh, input smoothness and set it to zero and now <clears throat> it is yeah jumping around uh, no longer jumping around but instead the particles are instantly slapping snapping back to their position so uh, now let's bring in some more chaos. And after a while, the whole particle system will uh, reset over time. And yeah, basically that's the whole basic idea of um, the using the particle walker for interactive um, projects. And uh, I hope you enjoy and uh, good luck.